In the last video and lecture we studied, direct ELISA. There we saw that, enzyme-conjugated antibody directly binds the, target antigen. And when substrate for the enzyme is added in the well, color development indicates, that the target antigen is present in the sample. Let's now study indirect ELISA. Indirect ELISA is the most popular. It is used for the detection of specific antibodies in a serum sample. For example, for antibodies to HIV, rubella virus, and to detect certain drugs in serum. Suppose we want to detect and confirm the presence of particular antibodies in the serum of the patients. These are two serum samples from two different patients. Let's assume antibodies of interest are present in serum of patient 1 and absent in serum of patient 2. Other antibodies may also be present in the serum of these patients, but we are not showing them here. We will take two microtiter wells. In the first step, specific antigens to the antibodies of interest are immobilized in both the microtiter wells. This means these antigens are known to us. For example, if we want to detect antibodies for HIV, the antigens absorbed in microtiter wells are recombinant envelope and core proteins of HIV. After some time, these wells are rinsed to remove any unbound antigen. In the second step, serum samples from each patient is added in their respective wells. Since antibody of interest is present in the serum sample of patient 1, these antibodies will bind to the specific antigen present in the well. But no antigen antibody binding will take place in well 2 because antibodies specific to the antigen are absent in serum sample of patient 2. Also other nonspecific antibodies present in these serum samples will remain unbound. Rinsing is done again to remove unbound and nonspecific antibodies from the well. Here, we know that the antibody binding directly to the antigen is the primary antibody. In the third step, enzyme-linked secondary antibodies are added in each well. Recall that, these secondary antibodies have antigen binding sites for the FC regions of the primary antibody. Thus, they bind to the primary antibody present in the first well. Since, no primary antibody is present in the second well, the secondary antibodies added, in this well, will remain free or unbound. Again, Wells are rinsed to remove any unbound secondary antibodies. In the fourth and final step, substrate specific for the enzyme linked to the secondary antibody is added in each well. In well 1, since enzyme is present, it acts on the substrate, and color development can be seen. This is a positive test. In well 2, no enzyme-linked antibody is present. There is no enzyme to act on the substrate, and hence, no color development. This is a negative test. So, this was indirect ELISA. Let's quickly recall and compare direct and indirect ELISA. Direct ELISA is used for the detection of antigens. Indirect ELISA is used for the detection of antibodies. In direct ELISA, enzyme is conjugated to the primary antibody. In indirect ELISA, enzyme is conjugated to the secondary antibody.
In the next video lecture, we will study Sandwich Alyssa. Thank you for watching.